Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Donjo number 20-S-FE. This is what would be called a door reinforcer or a door edge guard, a reinforcing plate, a wraparound plate. This happens to be a wraparound plate, but just a small one, really for just protecting the latch area of the unit. Okay, Very well served by looking at it behind. This would be quite appropriate for a deadbolt, um, and I say that because of the prep that they have, the profile of the hole in the edge, that does look like what the edge of a deadbolt will look like. Let's take it out of the packaging and get a closer look at this item. Okay, so this is a piece of, you know, Garden variety stainless steel is what it is, meaning it's just it's stainless steel is what it is. It's probably about 30 thousandths thick. All of this, what you see here, is a peel away protective film covering the brushed finish. Just going to pull a little bit of it back. Okay. I also want to get my caliper on that to see how thick the material is. It will be by design thin. And the reason I say that is because, well, it's thicker than I thought. It's about 42 thousandths. So it's not a sixteenth. It's about two-thirds of a sixteenth of an inch. You need it to be thin enough so that it still fits between your door and frame. And if your door and frame is already practically making contact with almost no margin. You might have to get a little fancy and mortise or chisel that back so this is flush with the edge of the door. That would make a nice installation. Um, so let's take some dimensional properties. Let's talk about what this item is used for. Overall height, about four and a half inch. On the outside, about an inch and almost seven eighths. On the inside, just heavy on inch and three quarter. It's gonna be meant for an inch and three quarter thick door. The return legs are one inch. That hole is going to be right in the center of that four and a half inch height. The other two holes for attaching it at about an inch and three eighths down to about three inch. And that's obviously meant to, these, these holes at 12 and six are meant to coincide obviously with the latch bolt that will be in the door that this is going to cover. Okay, It's going to include a couple of long, very, uh, a couple of long screws that are flat undercut head very undercut head. That's because of the very thin material so that you can have the screw basically flat or flush to the material. Um, this would, you know, this sort of latch guard or pardon me, this sort of door reinforcer tells me that the door is not compromised at all because you're not attaching the latch bolt to this piece of equipment and then all of it attached to the door and then securing it. You're literally using those screws to go through the latch bolt that's mortised to the edge of the door and sinking that into the door style itself. In door reinforcing wraparound plates, it's assumed that the door is damaged in that area. So you physically attach the latch bolt to the door reinforcing plate with machine screws. Then that whole reinforcer and the attached latch bolt, that goes onto the door. This is very likely new installation where someone says I, I want additional security over my deadbolt I don't want I want to be able to help reinforce my door in that area preventing it from being crushed and cracked because what have you done you've drilled a large hole in the edge of the door and you drilled a couple of smaller holes so you've compromised the integrity of the door and this u-shaped plate is meant to mitigate you know the fact that it's compromised when you install the latch bolt you're removing a lot of structural material and that's what I'm driving at so this basically tells me that, um, that, it, that it's an installation where someone's looking to reinforce what they're working on. And what I was driving at earlier about it looks like it's a deadbolt, because that's the profile or the cutout shape of a deadbolt. The width is going to be, you know, about 13 sixteenths. The height of the bolt itself is going to be about one inch. It's going to have a typical one inch projection, all deadbolts, not all, but most deadbolts do. Uh, you'll have those undercut screws to install that. When you're when you're machine when you are installing that, pre-drill those holes for those screws because you, if you're re if you're removing a deadbolt, installing this, you can count on the existing screws not being this long, and these screws are 
definitely longer than average. They are an inch and an eighth. Your, your standard screws won't be that long. Then you have these truss head screws, and they're obviously meant for here and here. Pre-drill everything. You don't want to split something. Many, 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 many years ago, I was hired to install latch protectors in a condo of, there were maybe 80 units, and I signed up 65 of the, of the residents for latch protectors. And one of them, I split the, the, I split the client's style because it's not fathomable that I didn't pre-drill the hole, but that style became split. Um, I don't know if there was a knot in the edge, but it was just awful. Uh, it was awful that the style was split. You know, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's compromising the security of a door. Um, so what happened with that door? You must be saying, okay, how did this story end? A, police, a Chicago police officer, and, um, you know, I showed it to him. I explained, um, yeah, that style, it was a micro, a micro line in the edge of the door. Um, you wouldn't notice it. Um, but it is there. And um, the client said, you know, listen, you know, people to get up to my, to get up to the living floor, they've got to go through several doors. Um, so I'm, he was not at even remotely concerned about being broken into, but said, well, you know, the logic between, behind a latch protector, and it was all Don Joe, by the way, um, is when you have someone scanning doors, they're going to pick the low-hanging fruit. The one with the latch guard, let's go to the next one. That's the logic. There were never any reported break-ins at that building after the latch, guard, latch protector project. It was, it was a fun project. Um, now, on the back of the packaging shows the intent of what how they want to see that installed. Okay, You're going to need to decide how you're going to surface apply this. It's quite, it is quite thin, so you may be able to surface apply that. Protect against kick-ins, the most common means of forced entry, and that's what we're talking about. Add strength to the door, to any door. Installs in minutes, possibly. Possibly it installs in minutes. Um, heavy gauge construction, I wouldn't call it heavy gauge. One piece construction, yeah, that it definitely is. Let's switch to the uh, screen view where we can look at some supporting documentation. Okay, some supporting documentation of the item that we're looking at. Door reinforcer. You know, we're, I'm not going to read this all out loud. You can review this. Screws, the packaging, the, the gauge of the material, the size of the item. There's some line art drawing. There's a template here, and let's take a look at the template. It's just a dimensional representation of the item. We've basically covered that. Does refer to other finishes, polished brass, antique brass, and stainless. Um, is what that would also be available in, at least according to this template. Then there is the product catalog, and that's a handy document because it will allow us to review the wraparound plates from Don Joe. And as I uh, may have said earlier, and if I haven't, I'll say it now, if you know the name Don Joe at all, you do because of their wraparound plates. That's just what these folks are very, very notorious for. Um, they're, a, they're probably the leader in, in this material. And here's our 20-FE door reinforcer for deadbolt and key and knob locks. You can certainly use it for a key and knob lock, um, but that profile there is meant for a deadbolt. If you have an inch and three-eighths door, order the 10-FE. They have another finish listed here in 10-B, which they call 613. Be mindful, if, you're, if, you are, if you possess knowledge of what 613 means, and it's very likely you do, I do want to qualify that Don Joe does not make 613. They make powder-coated dark brown or duranotic. They call it 613. They should not. They can call it 10B uh, or 10BE, oil rub bronze equivalent, but it's powder-coated. Antique brass, that's going to be on a solid brass-based material. Polished brass will be on a solid brass-based material. And then the S that we're looking at is indeed stainless steel. Okay. This catalog is very helpful because it will allow you to review all of those door reinforcers from this manufacturer, of which they have several and many. And at the end of the day, if you can't find one that works, they'll make one for you. Um, but in my experience, those are incredibly expensive because of the setup charge to do so. I've had a client with like a two and a half inch door or 
Um, it was something quite unusual um, that they needed a reinforcer for. And while Donjo could do it, the cost of that one unit was, was quite exceptional. One thing that I'll always recommend is if you have an unusual circumstance, go with a blank one. You know, maybe drill holes yourself. You know, that kind of stuff. And while it's, you know, you could, you can argue, you can, I can say that door reinforcers are band-aids because they are. Why are you putting this on your door? It's not a new, it's not a new construction. And in 30 years, I think I've only had one or two clients say, I'm putting those on. These are brand new doors and I'm putting them on from scratch because I know in two years I'm going to have to have them. Okay, makes sense. Um, but they're generally to repair a situation. You, know, you might have a four panel, you know, style and rail door built in the 1920s uh, and it's not realistic to replace that. So rather than replace it and maybe <laughs> even if you have the door, you may not have the carpenter or the handyman to swing it. Um, so you might say, yeah, I'll take a blank one and I'll, I'll drill a couple of holes, that kind of logic. So you can, before you have one custom made, I would, I would strongly consider that because these are standard products. All these are based on back set and size, door thickness, the way that the function holes have been prepped for a variety of different lock sets uh, Don Joe can help us with. Just a number of different applications. Suffice it to say, unfortunately they don't, um, hmm, it'd be nice if they had a cross-reference chart, but that would probably be practically impossible given the number of locks that exist in the world. There is a version that they have called the VF on these latch protectors. Rather than this being mortised to receive a latch bolt, they're not. They're meant to, um, they're just flat front is what that's called. And they're held on with these speed nuts is what they're called. And you would just encapsulate your door installation with that. Okay. Let's uh, take a look at the manufacturer's link as seen here. Now that's an interesting link because it will take you to the page where you can see all of the Don Joe products that we sell, a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog and all of their subsections of that full product catalog. If you want to only see wraparound plates, there it is. If you only want to see their latch protectors, there it is. Did you know that they make strike plates and they do a good job with extended lip strike plates that we all seem to run into a need for every so often. But they also make pivots, ladder poles. They also have hinges. You may not have known that Donjo does hinges. So their, catalog, their full catalog is nice. It's just a bit unwieldy because it's probably 170 pages long. Well, 113. But the point is, is there's no reason to look at it when you really just want to see their roller latches. Okay, You want to just see roller latches? There's the catalog. There's a roller latch right on the front page. Let's finish up this video on camera. Now, in conclusion, the name Donjo is synonymous with these wraparound plates. And I would absolutely, absolutely suggest that you consider this. Uh, why you might use this could be cosmetic as well. You may have had someone attempt to Lloyd your latch bolt, get in there with some sort of tool, and, and gouge the uh, stop, gouge the, the corner of the door. You could put that on just to kind of make that cosmetic problem go away with a maybe a less offensive cosmetic problem. So it can be used for that application, but it will most certainly give you additional strength with that door sitting in there. It's going to be a lot less prone to cracking and folding like a V in that area because of the hole that's drilled in there. Okay. So I would recommend it, no, no doubt. Um, I'm partial to Don Joe. They have a, a relatively unique product line in the sense of the confluence of their different items under a single name. They're good old-fashioned with a focus on fashioned uh, hardware people. They understand their products when you call. They know how they're used. They can speak to you intelligently about product applications. Uh, technical support, things of that matter, prompt, reliable, predictable shipping lead times. They rarely have a long, long shipping lead time. And they manufacture many items to order, so definitely plan ahead. But they do stock a lot of material as well. And I like them and thank them because they are willing, that's the most important part, and able to occasionally pull that proverbial rabbit out of a hat for you. 
So we appreciate their efforts in that regard. They make us all look good. Any questions on the Donjo 20 in a stainless finish? 20 FE in a stainless finish or any other Donjo product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.